The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour as we start off each and every show, we know that it's the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And what do we have? Well, we're kind of sitting. Ooh, okay. We'll do that. Uh, we're kind of sitting um, eh, about halfway between the lows of the day and unchanged. Well, a little less, I guess. We're down 30 points. We were down, what, 45 on the S&P earlier in the day. Again, not a lot of volume. Um, markets were a little higher uh, pre-market in the uh, run-up uh, with somebody believing that we had a deal uh, in the uh, rail strike. Uh, then it kind of turned to, well, the energy companies are lower uh, because of that. Um, crude off, uh, well, we can actually put that back up, can I? Because we have the technology. We can rebuild it better than it was before. Most people didn't know I was the $6 man back in the 80s. Anyway, uh, anyway, the S&P's off about eight-tenths of a percent, uh, kind of light and thready uh, trading pretty much the whole day. Although I do think uh, we're getting in for some kind of low uh, in the, uh, at least for the week. Of course, tomorrow is uh, quad witching and you can expect just about anything. But my guess is that we are going to see uh, the weak hands forced out before the end of the day, margin calls uh, put to it. And uh, if you ever wondered why they said put to it, it's because uh, you get a put assigned to you when things go wrong, and a lot of people don't like that. You can always exercise your options early, which is something I do uh, a lot, mostly because options market makers will try to screw you over. And the only real recourse you have, other than to get cheated, is to force them into either buying or selling something. Of course, uh, when we look at gold today, I. You know, crude being down three bucks, probably not as big a deal as gold as we get into some levels that uh, eh, probably going to make the weak hearted, uh, those uh, gold folks, uh, somewhat tepid. Uh, sitting on tinder hooks. Let's look at the GLD real quick. Uh, I always uh, go back to. James Grant of the uh, James Grant uh, Interest Rate Observer, who uh, had a famous quote, or at least one I like to remember, which is, it's important to buy gold, but it's more important to sell it. Uh, you certainly have uh, a move back down. I wouldn't want to probably be long gold unless it got back above the trend line down that we have. And, and that's not much. You can get up to 157, 157, 158-ish or something next week. Uh, that could be a potential washout in gold shares. I don't think so. Uh, more than likely, we'll have Tim Ord on in a few minutes and get his opinion. But it kind of reminds me a great deal. I wasn't trading that time at that time, but in the late 70s. Uh, the uh, 77, 8, 9... 1980, they were all a prelude with massive uh, inflation. You really saw the big move in gold into that 1980, I think probably starting in 81 and going to 87, if I remember right. So uh, why uh, not all uh, things uh, repeat themselves, they do tend to rhyme. And I'm wondering if we don't have pretty much the same kind of conditions. Uh, over the top government spending, a real lack of anybody willing to say that that is the issue. We have some other things like going on. Uh, let's see, I uh, got a couple of questions already. Answered the one on gold. Uh, Kathy Woods 
uh, A-R-K-K. We were talking about her earlier in the morning, uh, Pete. And uh, my comment was, well, you never found a dip that she didn't want to double down on. Uh, that's uh, If you've ever gone to Las Vegas, uh, I've seen some of the smartest people in the world, probably the smartest person I've ever met uh, in line, uh, go for a martingale system. That is, we'll just keep doubling down and doubling down. And, you know, if you can print money like the government, eh, sometimes that works. Uh, more than likely, uh, you will say a, a end up with the exact same fate of uh, many others that have gone before her, uh, which is a market that turns against you and you just end up getting crushed. I, I do recommend one of the best books about understanding long-term market cycles is Fooled by Randomness by Nassim Tlaib. Uh, one of the reasons I do that is he goes through all the different traders that he ran into in him coming up. He worked for George Soros. He worked with a, 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 some of the other big movers and shakers in the market and figured out that most of these guys, uh, all they did was do exactly what Kathy Woods uh, does, which is uh, continue to go after the most speculative of stocks. And for a long time, she's the darling of the market. But eventually, uh, you end up, uh, if you're in the Titanic, and you're going as fast as you can through the ice fields uh, of, uh, of the North Atlantic, you're going to hit an iceberg sooner or later. And maybe you hit it head on and it just ruins the ship. you got to spend six months in dry dock. But uh, more than likely, we're talking about thousands of lives being lost. And it's very tough. If you read that book, uh, he talks about several traders. He's got her spot on in the ones that he's run into before. So uh, in the short term, we're probably gonna get some kind of bounce. My guess is that by mid next week, that bounce will probably evaporate. As I said uh, before, I think uh, at least in the S&P, uh, we're really talking about a longer pattern. Uh, that pattern, well, I did the SMHs here. I wanted to do the S&P, let's get back to that. Um, in the S&P, we're probably going back uh, to probably at least that 3750 area. Uh, it's not real visible on this chart, uh, but uh, let's go back here and zoom in here just a second. Um, kind of looking at these levels back here on, what is that, March 4th. Uh, that was a retest of the low from... Uh, January 29th of 2021, and then, yeah, uh, the low out here, yeah, the, what is that, uh, March 4th of 2021, uh, just really kind of look like that is where long-term support is after uh, the rather massive gaps lower. We'll be back after this with uh, Tim Ord of theord-org.com. Uh, if you want the charts, email me at path and I'll be glad to get them out during the break so you can follow at home in glorious high definition. booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. And welcome back. Today, uh, it's been what, about a month since we've had Tim Ord on. Last time, he was a little nervous, thinking that uh, we had not seen the kind of uh, scare that would make a low. Uh, certainly, we got a lot of it one day, so sometimes you have to wonder if you uh, uh, should be careful what you wish for. I don't know if you wish for it. He just thought it was going to happen. But uh, we're back on the line with Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle. Tim has had a newsletter for over 30 years, been a trader for 40. How are you doing today, Tim? Good. Yep. Thanks for having me on again. Uh, I sent you over three charts. And actually, uh, let's, let's take a look at chart two first. The only reason why it kind of looks at the bigger picture. Um, it's the, uh, I don't know if you got that one up. Did you get my do. charts? All right. Uh, and, you know, chart two is American Association of Individual Investors Bull Bear Ratio. And so, in, in a nutshell, when everybody's bearish, you get readings below 0.4. And when you get everybody kind of bullish, these are actually individual investors. You get up around two or higher. It's usually uh, kind of exuberant, and everybody's kind of leaning too much bullish. <clears throat> Even though... Uh, the reading here comes in 0.53. The day before yesterday, it came in 0.34. And that's way below 0.4. And that blue line at the middle chart, every time it got down below 0.4, usually uh, you're at some sort of at least a short-term low, if not an intermediate term low. This chart goes back to 2007. And it could have gone back further, but... It gets so messy going back. But, anyhow, it's a good representation of what what you can expect on a short-term basis. The market's kind of been horrible for the whole year. But according to this chart, we're probably getting close to some sort of a worthwhile low in this vicinity uh, because everybody is kind of on the, the bearish side of the fence. And uh, the uh, individual investors are, are, you know, compared to the bulls and bears, they, you know, they're, really, they're leaning heavily bearish here. 
So that's kind of a good sign sentiment wise. So you basically want everybody on one side of the fence and you, you get on the other side of the fence. And then once they get on the same side of the fence you are on, then you want to get on the other side of the side of the fence. So that's how you, you kind of play this game. But it's a good indication intermittent term wise that we're probably near some sort of intermittent term low in this vicinity. Can the market move uh, a little bit lower short term? Yeah, you know, market can do anything at once. You, you just got to come up with uh, good indicators trying to give you a clue where the next low is. And so anyhow, if you can, go to chart one now. Okay. Um, chart one, anyhow, the, there's a bunch of, uh, I circled in red a bunch of uh, numbers in there. And the first number is the trend close, and the second number is a tick close. And if you notice, back at that June low, I recorded all the days that the trend was uh, 1.3 or higher uh, with a tick close of minus 300 or, or close, or actually minus 200 or lower. And so I pointed out all those days. Anyhow, when you get a trend above 1.3, it shows panic. If, if you ever look at the the trend, what it's made up of is made of advancing issue, issues divided by the uh, declining issues, and you divide that by advancing issues divided by declining issues, or uh, volume wise. So, in other words, get back to trend or the arms index is advancing issues divided by declining issues, and that's divided by the up volume divided by the down volume. So if you work out that ratio, if you get around 1.3 or higher on that ratio, there's a lot of volume hitting down stocks. So you think that would be bearish, but it's actually bullish because if you got selling going on um, and the higher that ratio goes above 1.3, the more selling you got going on and you really want, you know, the weak hands sell into the strong hands, they always say. And the higher that ratio is, you know, you you got kind of a landslide going into uh, some sort of a low, and the more panic there is, the, the stronger that low is. And so uh, I kind of developed this method years ago, and it works well and has stood the, time, uh, the test of time. But anyhow, if you look in starting, you know, close to mid-May all the way through pretty much, or not mid-May, but uh, early June all the way into late June, yeah, almost every day in there was uh, panic ticks and trend readings. And so to me, that's strong support. So you got strong support somewhere between 365 to 380 area on the um, SPYs. And um, um, so anyhow, I don't think that low is going to be broken because you just had too much panics in the ticks and trend. Uh, at the bottom window there, there's a three-day average of the uh, trend and you notice and it uh, looks like about yeah june 13th you got up to about 2.5 another three days you average 2.5 on the trend and that's pretty extreme the market did take uh just a couple of days down below that but that was pretty much the bottom that was it market kind of went sideways for you know next uh basically month and he had that kind of a breakout rally in July going into the August highs. Uh, so, and now we're pretty close back down to support. You got support between 380 area, which is where all the trend and tick readings occurred, uh, the, the uh, extreme down ticks and extreme uh, trend readings occurred. And you got support around 390, which is kind of some previous highs. So I think you got major support anywhere from 380 to 390. And on Monday of, of this week, I think it was, let's see, today's Thursday, when it'll be Tuesday of this week, you had a uh, trend reading close, uh, came in at 3.02. That's, that's about the highest you really get. Um, I think that's, well, back in uh, May there, you had a 3.44, which also was close to a low. So it's, it's pretty rare to get a trend reading that high around three or higher and when you do you, you pretty much reach panic extreme panic and uh to get a kind of a bicycle you need at least a, a preferably a 300 down tick reading uh, on the same day or at least a day later well yesterday we had a, a 277 down tick reading so 
you got pretty much an exhaustion move going on here to the downside. So I'm thinking the market's uh, um, probably in a basing period at, at minimum uh, and probably making some sort of a significant low in this vicinity. Uh, so I'm looking for a year-end rally. It's kind of hard to say when that rally will start, but I think we're close to one. Uh, if you do seasonality, next week is the weakest, according to seasonality now, is the weakest week of the year. Uh, so can the market base tell then? Possibly, but uh, we're looking, we're looking, in my opinion, pretty bullish here, possibly to year in in this vicinity. I hear that. Okay, we're going to be right music. back with Tim Orr to the Orr Dash Oracle. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we return, we've got Tim Ord of the Ord Dash Oracle. Dot com winner in multiple time of the year contests, which they don't do anymore. Uh, anyway, uh, we're looking at uh, some of your charts. We're on chart two or chart one. Right. Chart yeah, two, chart right? Chart two still. Um, okay, let's go back to that. Uh, okay. uh, uh, yeah, there's a couple other things I wanted to talk about it. Uh, in that July period, you see all those red numbers there? Those are all the uptick closes. And a lot, a lot of times, if you look back at the uh, May high, uh, you got 397 plus 397, 376, 570 uptick closings. A lot of times, you get uh, if you get a bunch of uptick closing, 
Uh, normally, that's kind of an exhaustion move to the upside. Uh, the one in July kind of still pushed higher before it finally pulled back. But it did give you a warning sign that the, probably the rally is not going to last. Uh, so, you know, you went up in August and you came back down um, now to, you know, a nearer sport or blue pots could still move 380. But I want to point out the tick readings also have a, a pretty big impact. This is tick readings on the close. Uh, so anyhow, that uh, late July, uh, early August period, we have all those uptick readings. That was kind of said, well, this is probably not the rally to chase, I guess you might say. And uh, now it came back down, and now we're, we're starting to get, you know, trend and tick uh, closes that are bullish again. So we're probably some sort of a um, immediate term low is not too far off. I'll put it that way. Uh, so um, can we mess around here a couple more weeks? Maybe. But uh, I think we're pretty much, I don't know what next week brings because of the uh, worst week of the year is next week as far as performance goes. But other than that, I, I think you're probably starting a base period in here at the lowest 380 and maybe right around here 390. So I'm kind of bullish uh, leaning into year end. So I'm thinking there's a worthwhile rally coming here fairly soon. So I got a question in, in from vicinity. a uh, emailer yeah. here. He says, uh, ask him, uh, how is there such negative sentiment when you see meme stops like GameStop and BlackBerry and other Bubble darlings in the uh, ARC uh, fund up on a down day. Also, where is the panic with the VIX uh, closer to 52-week lows and 52-week highs? Oh, the the VIX? Yeah. Well, I don't know about gain stock and all that. Uh, you know, those are just, um, don't know a whole lot about that. But I do pay attention uh, to VIX. Uh, you know, there's different types of sentiment indicators. And, uh some work uh, at different times, seems like. But, yeah, the VIX relatively uh, is low here. We're coming in around, well, about 26 area. Um, and we had some high tick readings back in at that June low. And actually May low, we got up, you know, 35 range. And that's pretty much historically uh, where intermittent term lows form. You get up in the high, you know, 30s, mid-30s. You're pretty much blown out. Seminal wise, you pretty much have, have reached the levels where your midterm lows start forming, and that's pretty much what happened this time around. Now you got a, a, or a VIX reading around 26, but in my opinion, you're past the lows. I think the lows are in for the year. So, as far as VIX goes, um, I'm thinking it's, it's pretty much on track what it's doing. Um, you know, matter of fact, you got the market down right now, and also you got the VIX down. And that's kind of a bullish divergence. So, uh, you know, if market's down, VIX should be up compared to the previous day. Uh, so, to me, with VIX down and the S&P's down, not a lot, uh, that's a bullish divergence. So, matter of fact, at that last high we had on Monday, if you look what happened that day, the S&P was up and also the VIX was up. And that's not supposed to happen with so it works the same way the other way around. Uh, so if the market's down and the VIX is down, so one's lying. And so and usually the uh, uh, the VIX gives a, the right direction. So I don't know. Hope that answers the question. I think it does. Um, are we? Uh, do you have anything else to look at this? No, we, we can we can three. jump on to three if you want. Okay, we're moving quite along, so we're going to have lots of time. If you have a question for Tim, uh, you can email me at path at tfnn.com, or if you want the charts, uh, email me, and I'll send a zip with all these charts in it. Uh, and, of course, you can always call 877-927-6648 and talk with Tim and hear his dulcet tones across the phone. Okay, chart number three. All right, this is uh, kind of a... Uh, the middle window is an inflation-deflation ratio, and um, uh, this comes from uh, Pring. Um, Martin Pring? Old, yeah, Martin Pring. He developed uh, inflation-deflation, and I, uh, I made a ratio out of it, and it seems to work well. And what I, I did, this is a weekly chart, and the chart goes back to 2000, 
late 2014. And so I took an RSI of this inflation-deflation ratio. So it looks at the bigger picture. You don't get many signals. You know, you're lucky to get maybe one a year. And the last time we got a signal in this indicator was back in 2019. So this is the first time we got a signal in, uh, what, three years. And how the signal is is when you get to the RSI, when you, know, when you get inflation deflation ratio RSI drops below thirty, then turns up, you're at least at some sort of a probably near me at term low. And I marked all the times when this when that type of signal was generated, and we just got one here. Uh, it's August nineteenth. We closed below thirty. I think it was twenty eight fifty six from memory, and uh, now we're above thirty. We're on thirty three as of when I printed this chart. So. This this uh, this indicator doesn't give many signals, but the signals it does give usually are pretty good. So, uh, matter of fact, there's no failure so far, and it just gave a signal back in mid-August, and uh, so we'll see how it works going forward. But this is uh, uh, pretty. It, it gives a signal on the equities, not the uh, gold itself. So this is an equity. So it'd be like on an XAU or GDX or HUI type of index. So it's pretty rare, uh, but when you get one, it's, it works pretty pretty good. If you notice, it kind of gave a sell signal back in August, or no, April of, April, May of uh, 2022, you know, about six months ago, because the RSI got above 70. And that one worked out pretty well, too. So it works both ways. Uh, it works pretty good at bottoms and also works fairly good at tops. So anyhow, this is um, kind of unique indicator. You know, the market in general has kind of moved sideways to down since August of 2020. Uh, so the sideways movement, yeah, either you're going to uh, get an impulse wave up or get an impulse wave down. But with the RSI uh, hitting below 30, it suggests the impulse wave could be up. So we'll wait and see, but. Pretty good indicator. Okay, we're going to be back in just a couple of minutes with Tim. I'm going to ask him some things, some burning questions. There are probably some ointments and lotions for those, but I'm going to ask him some burning questions about uh, some thoughts I might have. Uh, you can join in, call 877-927-6648, uh, or email them to me at path at tfnn.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. As we come back, we've got Tim Ord on the line and a question from one of our callers. And I'll get that taken care of here in just a second. Uh, that's for uh, Tom. He just emailed me. I'll get that taken care of while I listen to Tim's response. Uh, basically, he's asking, where do we go if we break the June lows? Where does uh, the market, where's the next uh, level down from that? Well, I don't think we're going to break the June lows. I think the June lows are the bottom for the year. Uh, the reason why, uh, because we had gobs of panic in there with the ticks and trend. So um, I've been thinking for the years out, we go above the August highs at a minimum. And I don't think we'll get back to the January highs, but we'll probably approach it. But no, I don't think the June lows are going to be broken. So pretty much everybody threw the towel in on us, you know, a bunch of different types of feminine indicators, and we got, you know, the ticks and trend kind of just blew out. And um, and if you look at the, uh, um, um, what's that, uh, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratio uh, totally blew out too. So pretty much all the damage has been done. So I don't think the market's got any energy left to push any lower because everybody's pretty much you know, uh, out of the market. So the selling, in my opinion, is done. So don't think June low is going to be broken. Okay. Uh, question, well, you don't spend a lot of time on individual days, but we've got kind of a big push down into what's going to be quad witching tomorrow for options expiration. So we could have uh, even a bigger, more hairier day than we had on Tuesday. Um do you have any thoughts on volatility and expiration and big moves like this? Well, it's, um, today's volume, I was kind of, I do a lot of stuff with volume, but Tuesday's volume, if you notice, it had a big jump. You know, eyeballing it here, it looks like about volume jumped close to, you know, not quite 100% compared to the previous days, but to me, Tuesday's volume looks climatic. Um, and so that's kind of a, if you get a gradual increase in volume as you go down, those are really worrisome because the market's going to keep going down. But to get everybody to hit the exit door right away, a lot of times that's an exhaustion move. And so everybody just panics and, and uh, that ends the move down. And so far, I think Monday was kind of an exhaustion move down. Yesterday we tested that low and couldn't cl close below it. And now, today, we're testing yesterday's flow. And it looks like volume is going to be a little bit higher than yesterday's volume. Today's not over yet, but um, it's kind of hard to say what uh, tomorrow. It could be just a dead day again, like, you know, last yesterday and today. We were, we're not making a lot of headway to the downside here, so I don't think the market really has energy to push down. Um, with the trend we had on Tuesday and the tick readings we had yesterday, 
you know, I, I thought we might uh, make an attempt to test that gap, you know, that big, huge gap down we had on Tuesday. That'd be um, it'd, it'd be a more logical situation than uh, another plunge down because I think the plunge has already happened, and that was that was Tuesday, and now the market's trying to figure out really can't go down as either going to go sideways or up. So, uh, well, that's what I was looking at is that everybody's rather bearish. We're getting into quad witching in which just about anything can happen. There's a lot of offsides, yeah. so you can get one day moves. Um, options are actually into kind of some territory that would make me think uh, if it wasn't quad witching, I'd probably have a lot of money on the line. Uh, I'm a little less certain about my options uh, predictions during quad witching, but everybody's got some kind of idea, at least uh, at noon, by noon today, that uh, the S&P could close up at 4,000 tomorrow. That wouldn't be much of a uh, bounce in a downtrend. But uh, other than that, uh, I don't see a lot. So anyway, uh, that's a couple of questions. Uh, you don't yeah, do a I, lot with the UVXY, do you, which is the uh, ETF on the VIX? Uh, VVX? Yeah, the VVIX. Uh, no, mean? the UVXY. No, I don't do anything with that. I, I do with the VIX of the VIX, the VVIX. I, I do a ratio and stuff like that. And I do watch the VIX pretty closely. It's a good it's a good tool. Um, again, getting back to that uh, option thing we're talking about here. Uh, ideally, you like to see, you know, the trend higher than one. Um, you really uh, get a, a thing going here, and we get the trend point seven four today, which is uh, not ideal for a bottom, I guess. But you know, that kind of blew out on Tuesday, so uh, you know, I'm I'm kind of thinking if the market's going to do anything. Tomorrow would be the day because we're probably going to kind of stay down to nothing today and everybody's waiting for the next shoe to drop. Well, I think the shoe has dropped and the market does is set up, I, I think, for if it's going to test the gap short term, it'll, it'll, it may take a shot for that tomorrow. Um, so, I don't know. Um, it's getting kind of quiet in here. Uh, you know, quiet is always before the storm, I guess you might say. So... But uh, ideally, you like to see another big downtick reading today and, and preferably see another kind of high trend reading. And so far, we're not quite. Well, right now, we've got 900 downtick readings, but the trend is kind of staying low here, 0. 0.74. That's not ideal. But I don't hey, know. I, uh, if, yeah, we still have a close today. I was uh, just looking at it because generally, after you have a huge move like you had on Tuesday, you get a lot of people that are offside on an options uh, week. Um, you get a lot of people that uh, have to uh, make margin calls. We're on the third day of that today. So I'm kind of waiting to see whether or not we have some kind of big uh, uh, washout, maybe in the last few minutes of the day on some market on closed orders or something like that, where we find some of the big guys that just can't um, make their margin calls, and so there's a little bit of forced selling. But uh, – Maybe we don't even get that. Maybe it's already occurred. As you said, volume was not all that exciting. I look at uh, the CBOE volume, which is a little different. But, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I didn't see any kind of blowout. I, maybe enough. But you think uh, we saw the selling climax. We're just retesting that in yesterday's now. And uh, maybe we just go sideways into the Fed next Wednesday. Um. Yeah, it could. Um, you know, uh, normally you get these, you know, the selling climax, you know, it's right after all that energy is dissipated, that, you know, the market just goes, you know, dull. And I think that's what's kind of happening here. So a lot of that energy has been dissipated on Tuesday's, my opinion, selling climax. And the market's trying to find a direction here short term. And I, I don't think it may move a little bit lower, but not a lot lower. I mean, we were down, what, 1,200 points? Uh, that was the Dow points on Tuesday. You don't see that every day or even every week or even every month. So it's, yep. it's pretty much of a blowout. So, Thanks uh, for being on again. We'll have you on in a couple of weeks. 
Again, uh, Tim Ord from the Ord-Oracle.com. Thank you for coming in. If you want any of his charts, just email me. I'll send you a zip of those three that we looked at today. Thanks again, Tim. Thank you. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we get ready to wrap up another excellent power trading hour, off of about uh, almost nine-tenths of a percent on the S&P as we go back and test some lows. About 1.2% on the NASDAQ Dow's off uh, three quarters of, well, not three quarters, uh, three tenths of a percent. Uh, crude, of course, uh, the big mover of the day, uh, down almost 4%, gold down too. Uh, not a lot of volume, uh, and we're going into quad witching tomorrow. I think we could see a lot. Um, I'm trying to get into one position here before the end of the day. Uh, it's not in an index per se. Uh, so I'll be uh, looking at that. And uh, just uh, be prepared. It's not uncommon, especially in September, to see huge ranging days on uh, quad uh, expirations in September. Uh, and of course, uh, just remember that the uh, futures expire at 935 or five minutes after all S&P 500 stocks are open. But generally, that's uh, 935, 936. And then, of course, uh, the regular equity options expire at the end of the day. So it's not uncommon to see a push higher or lower early in the morning 
only uh, to see uh, the market pushed around a bit by the option market makers at the end of the day for equities. So we've got a lot of conditions that look like a hurricane could happen. We could have some very big moves in the market. I would uh, make sure and get uh, your rest, be ready, uh, be uh, nimble, and stay frosty. We'll see you here tomorrow at the same time. But uh, as I said, uh, don't think that there's a lot to do other than watch. Uh, if we see a lot of throwing the baby out with the bathwater at the end of the day, it is the third day of uh, what should be margin calls. And uh, not uncommon to see everybody give it up just when the market turns, maybe even just for the day. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people.